We're going to start our attacks out with an arm drag series, just simply because the, the most common response from your opponent is going to be to attempt to control your top ankle. We'll give you combat base and standing variations. We'll start in combat base. So uh, what I'm talking about here is when I've got my foot anywhere, like regardless of even if I've kind of got it out here, at some point I'm going to want to bring my foot into play and you're going to be trying to grab it. So, uh, and particularly if I'm playing the like, you know, foot on the abdomen type, like so if you're a little bit more into the knee cut here, you know, like this sort of foot into the abdomen, you're going to be doing that. So it'll be either the foot or the ankle that you'll be grabbing. So I need to have an answer for this. Otherwise, I'm just going to spend a ton of time flailing about with my foot. So I'm just going to make a wrist grip. I'm trying to take the, um, uh, like the, the bone here that, that starts my uh, pointer finger and my thumb, and I'm trying to insert that into this divot between like your ulna and your fingers, basically, right? Like, kind of, mm -hmm. like if I was trying to handcuff you really tight, um, not that I would ever do that to you, but <laughs> if I was trying to, that's, that might be where I might put those handcuffs. And I'd be kicking my leg up. At the same time, I'm extending the reverse de la Hiva hook right. to shift your center of gravity. So simultaneously kicking this leg up, this leg up, and now I'm freed, I've freed your leg. The reason I want to extend this leg is just to keep you going in that direction because if you're driving into the knee cut and I go like this, this doesn't really help me very much. Like I can try to arm drag you, but I'm just gonna pull you into an underhook exactly. So I just want to make sure that I shift your center of gravity a little bit. So again, he's, you're grabbing, I'm making that grip, I'm extending you away, and now I can come to my drag. And I want to put my chest ideally on top of your knee, right? We're going to go over an instance where we're not able to do that, and this is actually going to be quite common because the more aware people are of the arm drag, the more they shift backwards. But normally I'll be coming here, reaching through, just, yeah, you're pretty much going to sit your butt anyway because you know that if you don't, I'm going to be jumping on your back. So the common response to the arm drag in scenarios like this, regardless of you know, this guard, butterfly guard, whatever, is most good practitioners will recognize their beat to that angle, and they'll just sit to their hip and play guard. So if I don't do that, if I'm stubborn, if you're stubborn, I'm taking my back. Yeah, so I mean, if we ended up here, I just managed to grab your hip. This knee being in the way is a little bit of a problem. So as long as this knee is in the way, I've got to somehow free it. So I can take my, let's just rotate this way. I can take my left shin and bring it forward as I put my hook in. So now I'm kind of controlling this lever to your hip. As I rotate you around, insert my hook and take the back. I... I would say that this is extremely unlikely to happen. Like the, this, the, the back take tends to happen when someone's knee is down from the butterfly guard and I can embrace the knee. Mm -hmm. That's a realistic back take with an arm drag. With this scenario, we're gonna be dealing with either somebody conceding to their hip because we finish like a pretty rudimentary single or because the frame is in the way, when I get to this drag position, Somebody will drive their knee back in, in which case I'm going to take them over the head or over the hip to the other side. Both are, like it just kind of depends on if somebody's driving purely laterally or on more of a 45 degree angle. So because I've managed to push you away when I gain the drag, if you start to come in now, because you're coming out at a 45 degree angle, I'll butterfly kick you over. I retain the wrist grip and the elbow grip because you're gonna to wanna to turn in and get on top. So I need to kind of control that. I'm basically punching towards your opposite armpit as I build up and attempt to come up on top. Almost like a Kimura control to stop me. Kind of, yeah. Control. Like with the Kimura control, it's obviously it's a closed circuit. Yeah. So it's going to stronger. be more powerful and stronger. So you have to be a little bit quicker building to your base, building to your elbow, but it's the same basic idea. Sure. And then if you were to come across a little bit more laterally, so if Okay. Yeah, so if I manage to hit this drag, yeah, then we end up just kicking the person over and then landing in kind of a knee cut position. I wouldn't necessarily attempt to knee cut here because I could still be just re-dragged. Exactly. What I will do is bring my knee across, move to the three-quarter mount, and attempt potentially to still take your back. But if all we end up with is this, that's still a pretty damn good reversal from bottom guard sweep into three-quarter mount. So again. Time your opponent and recognize that your opponent could be coming in more 45 degrees towards your shoulder or just more straight across to your hip and adjust accordingly using your reverse de la Hiva hook now as a butterfly hook to either kick over your head or kick across your hip while you maintain the drag. And you want to try to maintain the drag by keeping your elbow 
against your partner's mm -hmm. wrist like this, kind of trapping it. Like there's a, a platform arm lock that you can see Marcelo Garcia do all the damn time. That's really effective where he's pinching the hand. So it's kind of a similar idea here. I'm pinching, I've got my drag, but I'm pinching my elbow in so that you can't bring your arm back across into an underhook, which gives you that rotational control. So I've managed to gain rotational control. I want to keep it, maintaining that lever to your shoulder. And then whatever I happen to do with my uh, butterfly hook against your hip, will depend on whether you're coming forward or a little bit more to the side. Now if I'm standing, does anything change? Yeah, then I'm going to have to wrestle. <laughs> so, Whoa. yeah, so if, if we end up here and this ends up happening, again, I'm extending away and I'm moving up into single. Right? I have to make sure that I really pull you like forward and then I drive my head into your rib cage because just like with any kind of single leg attack, uh, you know, like wrestling attack anyway, if you're heavy on this leg when I come up, I've got bad base. I'm just gonna get knocked right back down. So I need to make sure that as I drag you, that I'm driving up, my left foot is going into base. I'm rocking up onto my right knee, pushing your weight onto that side. I should be able to scoop this other leg up, hopefully. But if we end up just coming up and I've gotta finish a single, run the pipe, we can kind of go through that. So I'd be here. I'd be coming up, and then I'd end up with my knees pinched, my butt would be down, my back would be flat, my head would be in your rib cage, and I'm going to start running you in several directions. Then I can turn, dropping my shoulder, forcing you to sit down. Basically what I'm trying to do is make you perform a single leg squat with a bunch of weight attached. I think people have trouble with the single sometimes because they turn and bow, but they don't worry about keeping the end of the lever and they allow somebody to have their ankle down here mm. while they're pushing their hip down. It's very easy for somebody to absorb that. Sure. Right? So if I get myself here and I'm just kind of doing this and your ankle is dropping down, yeah. there's not enough of a shift in your center of gravity. And there's not enough of this kind of cantilever effect. So I want to make sure that this pinch or even I sometimes See people teach it this way. Hike. Yeah, which I actually think is quite powerful. As I turn and I bow, it's very difficult for you to like have the strength and balance to do a single leg squat dynamically while changing directions. With my foot held up. With your foot air. held up in the air. Obviously, we can go down kind of a rabbit hole here of different finishes to the single, switching off to the double, high crotch, all that kind of stuff. It's not the time for that, uh, but. If you're going to play the reverse del Hiva and you're going to use the arm drag against a standing opponent, you're probably going to have to develop at least some finishing skills with your wrestling.